Cambridge, scattered from Lhasa to the Arctic Circle, in Virginia Water, Alice Springs and Mount Florida. A few chosen and selected people are entitled to wear this gown and nonsense because they've spent three years at Cambridge University. I've got no degree and no title and I've not come to mock. I've not come to Cambridge to share with you the chips on my shoulder. I've come because I want to enjoy what I've never had and I want you to enjoy with me a few moments in the university city of England at the most beautiful time of the year when the undergraduates have just finished their exams. Come on. Let us start again. Uh, no, am I dressed right though? No, not at all. You oughtn't to have a, a suit like that. It ought to be black trousers and a, and a black coat and a, a white shirt and a bow tie and some bands. I'm afraid you uh, wouldn't be let in like that. What would happen to me? You'd be turned out. Uh, well, in fact, your uh, supervisor at college who introduces you wouldn't have brought you like that. He'd have sent you home to get properly dressed. That's right, smile. That looks very nice. Oh, you look very superior. Not an auspicious start. I must do better. Cambridge can't be all university. Marshals of Jesus Lane own the airport, make Concord's droop nose. So, not forgetting my bicycle pump. Let's have a look at this East Anglian town from the air. The countryside is dull as ditch water. In fact, in Fison's flat Fenland, it is ditch water. Cement and jam and Lord's Bridge, radio telescopes to listen to voices from outer space. And there's the River Cam of Cambridge. For telecommunications by Pi, who began like Darwin's son Horace making scientific instruments for colleges founded in the 13th century by sadistic medieval kings for masochistic monks to study and pray celibately in hairy cassocks on drafty corridors for the winter wind comes straight from the Urals of Russia to this isolated city of 104,000 souls. It makes you wonder with all the cleverness in this town that they've not been able to sort the traffic out, either for the pedestrians or the cars or the cyclists. They had to get a Manchester University boffin, Parry Lewis, to sort the town out, and then they can't take his advice. So many solutions to every problem. In Cambridge, every cause has a champion, and town and gown together propound delightful accompaniment to croquet. I think the university probably grew up here because this was a good area of communications in the old days, in the 13s and the 1400s, as a result of which the two have grown up together, the city and the university. <laughs> Come on, mate, here you go. Am I, I'll, I'll, be, I'll be there. Yes. Uh, have you, uh, you're, they're in the way of your ball, my ball, rather. I think more of Cambridge it was years ago, thinking of that bypass now, I'm thinking of it as cutting the bridle path. Um, by which Queen Elizabeth I and all her court came riding through the harvest fields in August 1564. To browse, to dream, to drift, we have hard work. Well, now I think we go up to the middle. It's not possible to say whether the university is more important or the town is more important. And I think too much emphasis has been placed on whether the university is more important or whether the city is more important. I think we're clearly beating them. We have. I mean, this is just a little Yes, yeah, so one more thought. There's always been a problem to keep good relations between town and what are called town and gown. And uh, my father was mayor, and that's why I'm very glad to be high steward, because I think it's very important for the for us to keep in touch with the city and, and realise that it, so to speak, needs, we each need each other. I can't so take it I seriously. Lord yeah, Butler, the best prime minister we never had. It's as if the clocks all have stopped at different times. I expect to see the white rabbit scuttle around the corner, or a caucus race, or the Cheshire cat smiling. This is a street, most beautiful street, most wonderful people in the world. Now, you can go right down along the street, and you can see anything you like to any people 
but they'll always adore you and they'll love you if you're good to them. So keep smiling. When you're smiling, <laughs> when you're smiling, I'm doing this for the guide dogs and the blind, yes. In that time, I've raised, as you can see on the board, 3,000 pounds just over. And I do it all myself. I do everything for myself with God's help. That's what makes all my animals and all my cats so pretty, whichever the case might be. All done by us too, isn't that wonderful, eh? But there's a bit too many motor cars about today, you know, they get more and more and more, they do, you see. I can't hardly get by them, but maybe one day we shall have a road full of donkeys, wouldn't that be nice, eh? <laughs> This is what matters most of all to Cambridge. To get this heavy traffic out as quick as we can. It's a lovely city, it's a unique city, and it's being ruined by this big traffic. When I was a child, you know, my mother used to drive in. I was a farmer's son from Oakington, five miles away, and she'd stop the trap in the middle of Trinity Street, send one of the children into Matthews, the grocers, and out would come the shopman, and he'd take down her order, standing there in the middle of the street. Then she'd drive on and put up the trap in the Eagle in Bennett Street, do the rest of her shopping, come out, stop again in the same place, send a child in, out would come the order all packed up, stowed into the bottom of the pony trap, and she'd drive on out into the country. Those were the days. Those still are the days. Cambridge colleges christened from Jesus Christ to Isaac Wolfson architecturally beautiful, richly, independently endowed. Democratic, among its own fellows, each college competes with all the others as fiercely as a regiment. The drafty corridors have gone, carpeted with economists contributing to government think tanks, but looking after their own alma mater first. William Pitt was a Tory Prime Minister, and this is the only club left honouring his name. It's larger than the Cambridge Students' Union, a self-selected set of undergraduates of certain status. The young gentleman stocked the wine cellar and the library, but to cook the sauce and keep the books all tickety-boo, Harborn, the steward. You really do love this place, Mr. Harborn. Yes, I do. Very enthusiastic. What is it about it you love? Well, it's not necessarily the architecture or the, or, or the, so much as the atmosphere which is here when the members are here and doing what they have to do, lunching and dining and, and drinking and talking and being merry and enjoying their own company. And the members are all men? Yes, yes. And mostly from famous families? Well, yes, they are. They're all names. They're all names. They are not. <laughs> no. You speak a foreign language as well. Sir, no, 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 no. French or Lions? No, no. Yeah. 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 July is such a boring month, and one's very got to get away in July. <laughs> if I, I'm told that was particularly degenerate. <laughs> that, that was a, no, that was a parting gesture. Some go into publishing, some go into merchant banking, and it's all sorted out very carefully before they go out. And foreign office and that sort of thing. And they become the state and the state. Of course they do, of course they do. But lots of our current members are, um, have very high um, ranking governmental positions. Can't mention any names, but um, there are very important people. On the other side of the railway tracks, quite literally, live the more ordinary servants, among technical college students who squat for accommodation as best they can, with mums and dads who dress and undress the beds and cobble the shoes of college boys, wait and punish, mash and cook and sew and empty the dustbin. Paul's a dustman who went to Fitzwilliam College and got his degree to work as a dustman and be with his lady Jean B.A. running a not too well endowed community cafe. Well, you can't, you can't really say that any institution is right or wrong, but the fact that the university does 
own so much land around here and um, the fact that it operates for the benefit of a privileged minority does mean to a certain extent that it has rather a repressive effect on the town. And so the university has a lot of control over the fact that there isn't much industry in Cambridge, which means that wage levels are very low, there's very little unionisation, and people are, are generally kept in a very sort of subservient role to this rather aristocratic setup. What are the girls written behind? Maggie, is it? You about the university? Well, um, there is a lot, you know, universities here, and I don't think much of them, you know. I mean, I get on with Julian and Paul, I mean, as you know, they were students once, and they've done quite a bit for this Romsey town and for the kids here, and um, that's all I know, you know. You wouldn't want the university to go away? Well, no, because, I mean, the university is Cambridge. Every year, May balls are held in June to celebrate the end of studies and the start of a four-month-long vacation. It costs £15 for a double ticket to half a dozen bands and disco and dining in hall, and girls come, not so much from Girton, not a lot from Newnham, but in train loads from London and the Cambridge Language Schools, Adden Brooks, the Teachers Training College for Girls, the Tech, and perhaps one or two from Lyons Tea Shop. Some years ago, there was a young waiter who waited on table at Downing. Now he's a grant boy, an undergraduate reading law being waited at the very table where once he waited on. Once upon a time, I in your pill was the waiter. Oh, no, I was I, actually. Oh, yeah. Waiter, waiter. <laughs> waiter, Ed. Waiter, Ed. As long as you meet the right people, it's a great place. But there's so many different, different sort of social circles that you can get led astray. Uh, there's obviously a, what, what I call a circle of public school boys, upper public school boys. There's perhaps a circle of uh, grammar school boys, high school boys. But although there are different social spheres and social scales, I think one of the better things about the place is that you can mix so freely with either what you'd term the upper class or the lower class, and you just wouldn't notice a difference. I, I don't think enough boys from, from what you loosely term the working class ever get a chance to do it, which is obviously wrong, but this is just part of the system. And I, I just think the attitude of every person has got to be to let the system work for you rather than against you. <laughs> Oh, I am enjoying myself, but I'm not really into any social circle. No wonder the photographer lady told me I'd be turned out. I've got to bring me black shoes. And I get so jealous inside me, they're all so clever and witty and elegant. Or rich, I can't tell which. Let the system work for you. And I can't forget how it works for people outside this Alice in Wonderland. Oh, why can't it be like this at a Wigan Labour Club? And I've got a terrible temptation, 15 pounds a double ticket to get me money's worth of the free sparkling wine, let myself go like a rowdy. No pussy pussy, because I'm dressed up in a monkey suit. In a dinky suit, yes. Whatever you call it. It's not real. Mm. And you want to burn it all down. I want to burn it all down. Cambridge. We can't, because it's Cambridge, isn't it? And you, Michael? Huh? You wouldn't want to burn it all down? Burn all this down? No. My job. It's very difficult to tell anybody in Cambridge why someone from the north of England wants to... whatever anybody from the north of England wants to do, but it's... Tricky. It's what? Tricky. It is tricky, yes. Layers and layers and layers of trickiness. And it's 
because they're wanting to overturn the trickiness, and yet it is a very beautiful city. I know. Isn't it? Yeah. Lovely. All the green, all the river. Oh, what did I say? I didn't say that, did I? I shouldn't have said that. I don't like it. Not in front of the servants, they wouldn't. I just do not know. It gets odder and odder. And nobody understands what I'm driving at. You can't blame them for liking it. Even at five o'clock in the morning, with Nobel Prize winners tucked up in bed, and me in this condition. And so much to do with the rest of the day, changing clothes to play a part or play a game. Did you know we've had five socialist governments since the war? Grammar schools are to be abolished, yet Eton and Harrow and the great private independent public schools continue. A system where Cambridge colleges automatically reserve places for public school boys. 40% public school, this place, and nobody in England seems to mind except me. Our 14 rooms, bathrooms, toilets, from the top of the stairs to the bottom of the stairs, what's supposed to be done in three hours? You take that. That lasts us ten minutes per room. I mean, it takes you all that time to make the bed. How much do you get paid, Betty? Seven pound fifty now. I think the boys are different, sir, uh, in these days to what they were then. Of course, they were money men. They're not like you boys. Nobody was allowed up at college unless they got money behind them. What about now? Well, they're all the riffraff, aren't they? Now? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what are they now? <laughs> Betty? Well, they're anybody, aren't they? I mean, if they, if they can just get past their O-levels or whatever it is they've got to come up, they're just grand boys, aren't they? And all my boys are good boys. I won't say anything about that. I mean, they're very considerable and understanding. But, uh, of course, money talks every time, doesn't it? I see the bob ba ba do ba ba la bam boom doo 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 But most of you riffraff like me don't make it at all. No chance to rub shoulders with polar science or lateral thinking polymathematicians or the boys from pop. In the college cloisters, mega brains are living in 2007, or else they've stopped their clocks with Don Quixote. And here at the Rex Ballroom, heads have stopped their clocks at 1956. <laughs> It's difficult to get that time. No, no, no. no. Well, that kind of makes the body. body. How did you make yours, though? Me? Yeah. Well, I've got a chunk of cord, about a yard. <laughs> <laughs> Put the bottom on, you know. Copper wire off a building site. <laughs> 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 wind it, wind it round one of my old grand's knitting needles, you know. <laughs> Evo stick, stake it on the bottom, you know. Get a badge, solder two clips on the back. That's it. <laughs> you know? What about your chief enough? What about your <coughs> your <laughs> this fella is the youngest member of the team. Who's the youngest? Who's the youngest member of our Teddy boy? He made one. He made one. Why do some of you have red and some of you have coloured? Well, it's all just fair, isn't it? You know, it's it's your style, style, you know, it's change. It's your style, you know, what you fancy. You don't have to all be like you're in oh, no. evening dress, you know, you don't all have to be like oh, no, no. Like a chicken of the hop. The dance 
nation and a shriek in the nation and a hop. Twenty tides are as good as two thousand stones any time. <laughs> We rule. One, one, two, three, four. Listen to the Teddy Boy rule. Madrigals after bumps on the rowing river. Cambridge is music. The cockerel consort at this Girton Garden party. Something for every medieval king or queen. Music and footlights for Cambridge summertime. <laughs> It's a long way to the top of the gasometer in Cambridge and I don't think I'm going to make it to the top. No wonder three years here and you look back on it fondly for the rest of your life in a way you don't from the University of Kent. I always say to my wife, if we're bored for a moment here, we simply practice to go down to the bar and collect a party and there you are with an interesting talk and, and also helping people along. After all, we had the Prince of Wales here and we helped him along. He developed enormously while he was here. Perhaps we ought to have a lottery to decide who comes to Cambridge University. For I don't like the present system. But if it was all and just decided on brains, the sport and fun would go. A lottery it must be the answer. Like premium bonds, only everyone is entered and winners get a three-year Cambridge treat. Here and now, though, as the golden boys of the pit club play on Oxford side, the clock, it could be 1922. Where's Bo? Where's Thank you. Oh, yes, come on. No, come on, come on. You've got a bow. Right. 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 May I bow now, please? Right? Thank you. <laughs> bow. 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 I regret not having gone to Cambridge in life. No, not at all. I mean, I suppose, I mean, I think, I mean, even if I went to Cambridge. I think they're as good as each other. Yeah, absolutely. It's a very lovely town, Cambridge. Even the Teddy Boys like it. But because of what Cambridge University is, a buttress of the establishment, I still can't stomach it. But that's my problem. Oliver Cromwell wanted to have the stained glass windows of King's College Chapel pushed in. But John Milton, his secretary, the poet, he said no. But then Milton had been to Cambridge.
good night.